WISE can automatically adjust properties such as volume or adjust panning according to the spatial relationship between the emitter and the listener. In other words, if the listener moves closer to something in the game that's making a sound, the soundscape can be adjusted to audibly paint that picture. This does not mean that we as sound designers are taken out of the equation. In fact, using the WISE positioning system, we define the framework for how WISE will react as objects in the game change position. For example, in this project, we have a teleporter sound that's already been imported and is set to play infinitely. As the player walks towards the teleporter object in the game, we want the hum to get louder, but we don't want it to be very noticeable until the player gets really close to it. If the player turns in relationship to the teleporter, we want the teleporter's sound to automatically pan accordingly. To apply positioning properties to an object, first make sure it's selected, and then choose the Positioning tab. Towards the top of the positioning area, you'll see a speaker panning property with the default setting of Direct Assignment. Speaker panning can be thought of as a traditional panning system where the audio either goes to the specific output channels designated within the file, like left or right, or the audio can be panned to whichever output channels we desire by using a conventional pan control. You can learn more about this approach in the speaker panning tutorial. In our case, we don't want to use this approach, as we want circumstances in the game to dictate where we hear the sound. This is accomplished by assuring that the listener relative routing checkbox is selected. This activates options that will allow the sound's pan position, as well as other things like volume or filtering, to be calculated based on the positional relationship between the sound emitter and listener. For panning to be factored, click the 3D Spatialization Property pull-down menu. You see an option for Position or Position plus Orientation. The difference between the two has to do with how multi-channel audio sources are handled. In this case, we'll choose Position plus Orientation. Note that with this speaker panning 3D spatialization mix property, it is possible for WISE to mix the results of both speaker panning and 3D spatialization approaches. But in this case, we only want the result of the 3D spatialization to be heard. So we'll just verify that the mix property is set to the default of 100, so that only 3D spatialization will be used. To have the game automatically adjust other properties of the sound, like volume or filters, we need to implement the use of attenuations. Attenuations are instructions for how a sound should change based on the distance between an emitter and listener. Currently, this object doesn't have an attenuation assigned to it. We assign an attenuation by clicking the selector button. Here we can choose from attenuations that have already been configured in the project. However, in this case, we want a unique attenuation for the teleporter, so we'll choose Default, Custom. Now that we have an attenuation applied to the teleporter, we can now edit this attenuation. Click the Edit button, and a graph appears where the output bus volume is represented by the y-axis, and the distance between the emitter and the listener is represented by the x-axis. In the middle, you see this red line, which is the attenuation curve that shows how the two will correlate. To properly adjust this curve, you really need to understand the meaning of the game's distance units, which are defined by the game itself. In this game, a distance unit represents approximately one-fourth of a meter, so the total distance represented here in the max distance property is set to 100. So that translates to about 25 meters in gameplay. You can scale the x-axis distance to whatever value makes the most sense for what you're trying to accomplish. We'll set this value to 50, since we want the sound to be completely inaudible if the listener was any further away. You can simulate the distance of the sound by simply dragging the distance cursor left and right as the sound plays. Here we can see how that sound fades all the way out and then back up. This provides a much better sense of how the visual of the curve relates to what will be heard in gameplay. We can double-click the curve to create and adjust additional control points. And if you right-click the curve, you can choose various options from the Curve menu to create smooth transitions. Now that's giving us the effect we're looking for. Now, in addition to volume, you can also, in the curves area, select the low pass filter or other properties. Choose the low pass filter, and then to the right, select custom. 
We now see a similar curve that represents our low pass filter setting. However, if we also want to see that overlaid on top of the output bus volume curve we already created, then click the pin next to the output bus volume. Now we can see both. Again, we can play and hear how both volume and filtering is being applied. Now we have the effect we're trying to achieve. Accounting for how sound changes over distance is important, but what about when a sound like a radio is aimed directly at a listener as compared to if that radio was turned the opposite direction? From the listener's perspective, it wouldn't sound the same. To account for changes in an emitter's direction, we can apply cone attenuation. Click the cone attenuation checkbox. This will make available several cone attenuation properties, and then further to the right, we see an area where we're graphically representing what these properties mean. Our emitter, the teleporter, is represented by the center of the circle. The outer ring represents its maximum radius of attenuation. The listener is represented by the dot, with an orange line indicating the angular relationship between the emitter and the listener. Now, if we go ahead and play the teleporter and move the distance cursor, we start to see the dot move closer and further away from the center. Remember, the dot represents the listener in this situation. Now, we can grab the orange line and then swing it around into the area of maximum attenuation. This area represents where an additional attenuation is applied when our emitter is facing away from our listener, and that additional attenuation is currently set to minus 6 decibels. Let's increase this to minus 16 dB. There's also a transition range that we pass through in getting to the area of maximum attenuation, and we can further customize this to our liking using the inner and outer angle settings. And now let's listen as we change the listener's position in relation to our emitter, the teleporter. <laughs> 